It's Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. in Central Europe, and it's time for our next Space Cafe Israel with Maydad Pariente and his guest, Dr. Anna Heller. As always, we really appreciate your participation and ongoing feedback, and we constantly learn and improve based on the feedback you give. My name is Kiara Monter. I'm the event coordinator at Spacewatch Global. Spacewatch Global is a Europe-based online platform for information in and about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. And I would like to thank all our private and corporate supporters that have showed their great commitment to keeping our independent journalism alive. We really appreciate that. And I know many of you are already familiar with our website, our bi-weekly and daily newsletters, and the Space Cafe podcast. Our latest one features sustainability professor Judith Walls from St. Gallen University and is definitely worth a listen. We also have new exciting episodes of our Space Cafe radios. The latest one is with Craig Dolman, the principal scientists for ocean and ice at ESA, who we met at the Living Planet Symposium in Bonn. So also give that one a listen. And we have a fan shop online open for you to support us actively and become a space watcher. Now, if you've missed any of our previous web talks, we have an archive available on our webpage in the event section and on our YouTube channel. And if you're looking for our latest space cafes, the 33 minutes with Kaiova Schrogel, our space law breakfast and our space cafe Austria, we do have a bit of a backlog, but the events will be online soon. And we will host our space cafe Israel live on a regular basis. Now with that, my job is done and I'd love to hand you over to your host for today, Maydad, over to you. Thank you, Chiara. Thank you very much. And thank you everybody for coming to our space cafe. Bring your coffee, grab your hats, and uh, let me introduce my guest, who is a fierce promoter of science and space technologies for the youth by leading space projects in Israel, Europe, and South America. My dear, dear friend, Dr. Anna Heller, or as her friends call her, Annie. Hello, Annie. That's right. Hello. Hello, my dad. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to be with you today. And we are again together, yes? And Chiara, thank you also to you too for inviting me. Very glad to be with you. And maybe some of my students are also here us. So let's go. <laughs> OK. So um, we're going to have a tradition here in Space Cafe Israel. I'm going to ask all of my guests uh, the first question and the last question will be uh, identical. Uh, and the first question is always, can you share with us something personal that isn't written in your LinkedIn profile? Wait, I need to ask. Are I going to get that mark? No? <laughs> and so, no. Tell me later if, you get, if I get a 10. Okay. So, something about me, just like that. Okay, so let me see. I can tell you that uh, I am the result of many cultures. Uh, I, uh, I have grandparents from Ukraine. Oh. Yes. Italy, Spain. Um, my parents are from Argentina, so if if you put all this component together, you get the end. And the way, add another one, the most explosive, the Israeli ingredient. <laughs> so what you get is a very passionate woman. But um, okay, I, I will tell you something funny. This is a story. This is a story that my grandmother told me. This is about the passion. Passion is, is, is something she said that the, all, all the passion I have for always looking to the star, exploration of the universe, is it was because the legacy, the legacy of my ancestor, the family. And if you know, if you remember, um, maybe you don't know, I, I, I will do it like this. Cristóbal Colón was the one that uh, went to explore and discover the new world, isn't it? This everybody knows, but maybe what you don't know, 
that day. He traveled with three ships, and the name of the ships were La Santa Maria, La Niña, and La Pinta, three ships. And the captains of these two ships, who two boats was in the, in the first, but the captains of the other two ships were the Pinson brothers. That according to my grandmother, were family. So this is the, the idea. I don't, I don't know if it was just a, a her imagination, but the question is that I don't see that I can put this in my info, yeah? Maybe I have to write the descendant, descendant of a New World Explorers, something like this, but I think nobody is going to believe. This is uh, something uh, in the family. <laughs> well, well uh, thanks to your uh, grandmother, we know this story also. Uh, and it doesn't really matter if it's true or not. It's an amazing story. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's true, yeah, but I always, <laughs> I, I, I always have that in, the, in, my, in my head. Ani, you, you have a PhD in astrophysics. Uh, what was it about? And do you still practice astrophysics in your day-to-day -day work? Yes, sure. This is a very important question. Very, very good. I, in fact, I use all the arsenal I have. <laughs> yes, I use uh, astronomy, geophysics, astrophysics, computers, satellites, everything together. Because you know, the science, science and technology is a very, very powerful tool in, in education. But to do science, you need technology. And to do education, you need science and technology. So I use everything, yeah? For technology, in this case, and what I am doing uh, now, is uh, I am using satellites. Yes, satellites that uh, are very small and cheaper than the standard satellites, but they need to overcome the extreme conditions of the outer space. So you need to understand thermodynamics, radiation, communication, gravity, things like that. And then you need astrophysics. Because astrophysics is the science that study all the processes, physical processes in, in the cosmos. And um, we are always doing questions. We are questioning even our models. We are always making new models to answer those uh, Question we always have how, how nature is working at the outer space. And in fact, we are always asking how, why, and inevitably you come to the big questions of humanity. So who are we? Where we stand? What is our universe? And since where are we going? And this is when the educator can because the educator, the, for the educator, what is important is the person. And the more you study, the more you discover your humanity. See, this is the message that I always intend to, to pass to, to, my, to my students. So what was your PhD about? My PhD was about galaxies. But it was a story about it. I did the, the I did study the evolution of galaxy, but because my my mentor didn't agree that I made I made my PhD in the Taubert satellite explorer <laughs> because he said that maybe it's not going to be launched. He was right. Taubert satellite was never launched. The Taubert satellite was the Tel Aviv Ultraviolet Explorer Satellite Tel Aviv University. So he said, no, we are going to do something more solid, solid. 
So I, I study the, the evolution of very, very small faint galaxies, what is called the irregular galaxies, and how the star uh, are uh, building there. Sometimes people said that I was a doctor of stars, looking <laughs> for the, the, yeah, how far, how stars are boring. Yes. That, that, that's uh, great. And for uh, our viewers that are not familiar with the history, Tauvex was a UV telescope project by Tel Aviv University that was uh, left on the ground at the clean room in the India, in the launch site. Uh, it was supposed to be launched on the GSLV mission. And this GSLV mission uh, actually was a failure and uh, the uh, missile uh, exploded. So the, the actual uh, original Tauvex uh, was uh, brought back to uh, Tel Aviv and you can read everything about it uh, later on. Uh, great uh, doctor of stars, I liked it. Um, <laughs> Tell me, Annie, how did a small girl from a small town in Argentina become the, the mother of the STEM education space program in Israel? What, what is the story? It's a long story. It's a long story. But let me tell you something first. I never, never had a telescope when I was a child. I had something very, I had much better. Oh, what was it? It was 30, no, 360 degrees, degrees of horizon. Okay. okay. 360 degrees of horizon. And up all the rich sky of the south, much beautiful, much, much more beautiful than the north. The, the thing is that my parents had a, a estancia, you know? My parents' uh, main work was uh, uh, raising so horses and, and cattle. Okay. And I was like some um, cowgirl, this, something like this. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot, by the way. <laughs> okay. I, there was a lot what to do at the ranch, of course. We never did at the ranch. We live in in the city, but the city was about uh, 50 kilometers, so every, we never had opportunity, uh, holidays, weekends, we were there. And there was a lot what to do at the Estancia as a child. It was the fishing, hunting, but the, the best, that the, 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 what I, the best like, uh, love was to ride my beautiful horse. I had a beautiful, beautiful course, and uh, to write it at night. Wow! It's not, it's not a, a lie. It's true. It, it sounds like a, a Disney movie. It's Somebody true. should make believe a Disney me. movie out of it. It's true, believe <laughs> me. So I write it in my, in my beautiful course at night. I always dream it, and then I came back and I wrote little stories of science pictures. And my my father was a hero, of course. And sometimes I just lie back on my back and take no took notes of the position of the constellations and the moon and things like that. And my parents said that I always talking with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not surprise for anybody that I left my home. I went to the university in Buenos Aires in La Plata to, to study astronomy. And then, of course, Israel for the master degree, PhD degree, and the rest is history. So, but, but still, uh, how did you come with this passion of uh, working STEM with, with STEM education, with, with kids? Why, why kids? Why kids? All the time, I, I have a special connections with the kids. I was working with a young, young student of the university, first year of physics, with a, with a student. I have very, very great connections with them. Uh, it was a year that they, in 
the, was a uh, um, selection of the best teacher of the year, and I, and I was selected. And uh, it, it, it came a day after, just like that, out of the blue, that uh, I found myself that I have everything, in fact, I have everything. I have the science and the technology and these connections with the, with the young, so I can make a difference. And uh, to, be, to do something really, really good. So I started with this idea that uh, you can launch uh, age of 18 a satellite, a difficult idea, an incredible idea, ridiculous idea by that time. But this is how it started, with a passionate woman. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's talk a lot a little bit about our uh, joint history, if I may. Uh, 2013-2014, the Duchifat project, the first Israeli nanosatellite, or actually Pico satellite, 860 grams of pure technology and hours, 10,000 hours of education. Um, from your perspective, from the day, the inception of the idea of having a student satellite until the day of the launch when you were with uh, a few students at the launch site. What was the most difficult obstacle during uh, these years of Duhifat project? This is, there were many difficult technical difficulties, but this is, for me was it's not important. Uh, for me, the most difficult part was to keep the dream alive. This is the, the most difficult part because the concept was very difficult to understand and, and people couldn't, couldn't believe that uh, things that people, so young people can't launch a satellite. Let's say the system was not ready for that. Let's talk, let me tell you, like this, let me explain you like this. Take, for example, the system of the educational system. Educational system of every country needs their, like this, they need to concentrate on a good and strong average. This is the focus. Is for the numbers, and all all their effort is for the numbers. But youth space is not for the numbers. Youth space is to build the excellent excellency that pull the numbers up. So bring youth space bring every standard. Now let's take for example another another system, the aerospace industry. For the aerospace industry that time, to think that children, because they consider them children, not young people, children, and all, every time they, they said me, your children, but they were not children, they were young people, yes? And say children to launch a satellite, ridiculous. And another thing, CubeSat, just a poor toys. Nobody believed that that little thing could be a satellite, and look what we're doing today. So, yes, there may, were many difficulties along the way, but I think that keeping the, the, the dream alive was the, the most important. We, went, we, we did it step by step. We made a lot of mistakes, and sometimes started again. But during the years, it took 12 years to the launch. And slowly, slowly, people started to know about us. And, and we went to every place, every place that invited us. And we were at ferias, congresses, and uh, meetings. And uh, I remember, for example, the best place where my, my students liked to go 
was to the NIDES. NIDES was National Instrument Day Congress. Why? Because there was the best food, a beautiful hotel, very luxurious hotel, and a lot of food. And yes, there were many people had general were individuals that supported us along the way, and then we we got the the satellite, the SDK, the simulator from Synergy, another private company, commercial company. And then slowly, slowly, we uh, went and uh, built our first ground station, satellite ground station, and the, the clean room, and all this, of course, with the support of the Israeli uh, Ersliya Science Center. And then finally, finally, at the last year, we got all the support. But I knew, I knew that this, it was one shot, one opportunity. It was all failure or success. I couldn't do it at all. So we need to do a lot of tests and corrections and debugging. And there were a lot of requirements from the large server. So I went to the best system, space system engineer of Israel that is just sitting in front of me, Meidat Pariente. And, and we did it together. Thank you, Meidat. Thank you again. <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, working with you on this project. And I think the proof is in the pudding. The fact exactly. that uh, there was the Duhifat 2 and Duhifat 3, and then uh, additional eight satellites, all uh, led by the Hetzelia Science Center. Uh, that proves that the legacy is live and kicking, and the first success was one of many. In fact, there are 11 student satellites, launched by students of Israel. Um, I, I counted uh, hundreds of PhD masters, uh, people working now in the high industry. I, I think that Dukifat one, the first one, made, made the difference, made the impact. And, uh, in, in, in many aspects, also we, we proved the participation of the girls in the program. Um, Nobody, nobody have questions, any question. No doubts anymore no about- doubt. Exactly, yeah. no doubts. No doubts anymore. anymore. Exactly, this is not what I wanted to say. Uh, just, just look up. If exactly. you have doubts regarding capabilities of high school uh, kids and uh, young uh, people, just look up and the satellites are there. Exactly, uh, exactly. Annie, let's talk about uh, another aspect of your uh, public activities. I would like to uh, ask you about WeSpace. What is WeSpace and what is the organization goals? WeSpace is women in space. I mean, is the professional women of Israel working in space. And we are not many, it's just the beginning. We, we have uh, about 200 members, a little more uh, from the, of the 200, about 20 are very active, and five of uh, uh, are in the board of director. I I one of the co-founder of WeSpace. And what we do in, in in two space is, is in fact uh, to help each other. See is that we are not at the front of the uh, space uh, sector of Israel, not yet. But we are not at the front not because I, I don't blame anybody. Just it's just because we didn't have the time to be there. We didn't have the time. Because look, go back 20, 30 years back, 
and what were the possibilities for a woman? Or you went to the university, to the academy, or you went to the army. This was in Israel. So for the academy, not, not everybody likes to live all her life to do research. And uh, for the army, well, this is not for us. In general, not for us. It's not appealing to us. So the possibilities were very small. But then come new space, much later. And with this new space, appeared new possibilities for the woman. And, and then women started to work in, in, the, uh, in the space sector. Okay? And, and they are doing their way now. They are not there. Not yet. But uh, I know many girls, many, many women, uh, they are generally in the 40s or the 50s. This is the age. And they are working very, very strong to the top. So it's just a matter of fact. What we do now is to help each other, to tell each other about connections, network connection. It could be local, international. Uh, we have a program of mentoring for the young professionals. We learn new technologies from other women. And we, want a lot, we have a lot of fun. This is the We Space in Israel, and uh, I, I think we we are just at the beginning. People that don't know what we can do. We are going to show what we can do. Not yet, wait for us. And for uh, those that uh, will uh, see this uh, Space Cafe later on, especially uh, um, the kids, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more about the mentoring program of WeSpace? Mentoring program is a, a, to take one of our, our seniors professional took under his uh, uh, responsibility uh, another one, also professional, but at the very, very beginning of her uh, career. So uh, we, this, the mentor, what he do is to teach her how to present in conference, how to write a paper, everything that you, not always you have the opportunity to learn how to do it. So and all the time, they saw those young girls know that they have a senior one that already had done that before, that with her experience, it can make her life much, much easier and faster. Okay, that this is mentoring. Uh, and yes, we have a very good mentors. I am not really working myself in that, but uh, uh, because uh, I think that those women that are more near uh, the, the sector working right now in Israel have to be the mentoring, yes? I am working outside. I, my work now is uh, outside of Israel, so I think it's, uh, it's not uh, the, the most uh, important thing for the young professionals. This is mentoring. Okay. Uh, interesting, and I, I, I guess that uh, uh, people can find you uh, online, we I space, and, and uh, approach you. Uh, my next question is about generations. You educate many young minds and met their parents. What do you think is the main difference between the generations? Okay. Let me explain like this. I think that the reason that people came to space, there, may, there are four reasons. The motivation. It could be curiosity. Yeah? It could be adventure. 
benefits and necessity. This is, I, I, made, I, I thought a lot about this, and this I think is, is the main reasons. So take, let's take the, the parents. But remember that my, the parents of my students are also young. <laughs> okay, they are also young. So they know what space is. They know what is TV and internet and, and, and all the benefits of a, of a space. The technology, they know. So they want for their children to go with these directions because they know that this, the people that they don't adapt to new technologies is going to stay back. So for the parents, is benefit for their children. For their children, is something a little different. It is curiosity, adventure, and benefits. Three of them, not necessity, not in our case. Necessity is something different, okay? This, this is another story. So, what I want for my students is exactly the, the, this little part of the adventure. I want, that, I want them to be just there, to take the, the, the program we are doing, the work that we are doing today, together, like an adventure. And, say, and, and this is exactly what I want for them, just there. And, in fact, if you think what is the difference between the two generations, it's just some pattern of opportunity. Yeah? Their parents didn't have the opportunity, but the children had. That's all the difference. It's not here, it's only the opportunity they have to do all this thing, curiosity, adventure, and benefit. That's it. This is the difference. Interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. Um, since uh, space is a small community and everybody knows everybody, I would like you to name an, an Israeli leading woman active in the space industry that you think should be a role model. And if you can also explain why do you think should, she should be a role model? But my dad, we don't have any. It's too early. Oh. It's too early. We don't have a role national model. We don't have. But what we have is many role little models. I mean, all of us, all our we space women, yeah, all we are in our way role models, but we don't have a role national model. We didn't have the time. Maybe someday. Maybe someday when we have an astronaut or something, I, I intended to be an astronaut, but didn't choose me. So, no, <laughs> but uh, uh, not yet. It's too early. Too early for a national role model. But yes, my, the girls of We Space, I think each one of them are role models in their own way. Definitely. That's great. And uh, it's very interesting what you said. Do you think that? In the space industry, only astronauts could be role models. Well, you see, always people look for a hero, yeah. And think, yeah, we were talking about national, national role models. Everybody, everybody. So I think, yes, it's, it's probably is going to be uh, our astronaut. Okay? For example, Colonel Lila Ramon. Yes, it was. It is. He is a role model for many people, uh, but not necessarily. You are right, it has not to be an astronaut. But uh, it, the thing is that we still don't have a role in national role. Um, you know, one of, one of the uh, leading roles in, uh, in the Israel space industry is the general manager of the space division at Israeli aerospace, aerospace industry. Uh, do you think uh, uh, it's time to see uh, more women in uh, 
leading roles in the industry? Yes, of course. Of course, we are going to be there. But I said before, we didn't have the time. We are going in that direction to put the women in the front, in the leader, leader position. But uh, not yet, not yet. We are not there like that. It's a okay. matter of time. Okay. So, so now that you... Don't blame you... anybody. Don't blame anybody. It's simply <laughs> the, we are not still there. Okay. But we are on the way, as I understand. Yes, right. Now that you achieved your dream and you have a legacy of Duhifat satellites and uh, hundreds and thousands of students that uh, were educated in this program are now uh, in the uh, high-tech industry uh, and in the army. Um, I heard, and please confirm, that your next challenge is actually in Spain. Can you share a little bit of details about that? Yes, of course. Well, I told you before that uh, after, I, I think I told you, after Tukifat 2, I, I felt that my mission in Israel was finished, but mission accomplished. So I started to, to expand the idea of youth space uh, to other countries. And uh, interesting, that is, it was again a woman that opened it for me the door. This time in, in Europe, in Israel was the mayor of the Erzliya city, Yael German, that today is the ambassador of Israel in France, and in Spain it was is. A, the ambassador of Israel in, in Spain, uh, Dr. Claudia Rodica Gordon. So, once again, a woman. And so, with uh, Dr. Uh, Rodica, uh, we were working from the, I mean, three years ago, something like this, she started to, to work um, in trying to uh, bring this project to do something similar like uh, like Dukifat in Spain. So we have a lot of meetings all around Spain. Yeah. And all the year meetings and more meetings, but and finally one school from Madrid uh, took the lead, took the challenge. The Las Busa School in Madrid. So, uh, 30 students enrolled in the program. No selection at all, because I am for giving same opportunity to everybody. And no difference woman, uh, female and uh, male. I mean, same opportunities for everybody. Uh, gender balance, yeah? gender balance. And my only requirement was this, that if, if let's do it gender balance, same, same number of girls, same number of, uh, of boys. So we started. We were working together already two years, two years. We, we did a lot of improvement, a lot of progress. Uh, the program has many phases. It's, uh, at the beginning, the organization of the logistics and the team workers, and then the definitions and the analysis, the, and all the step of a, of a mission, satellite mission. And in fact, we came to the point of the PDR. We already have a PDR, preliminary design review, ready. But you will see that everything now is easy. No, it's not easy. Nothing is easy in life. Nothing is not easy. Not for me. It seems to be. So the reason now they told me is because of the economy, economy situation. So now is the economy situation. So we are in the waiting. Yeah. Uh, 
we are waiting for for people to say that's okay we are now going to go um, but but the mean, meanwhile something happened because the the project in spain got the attention in barcelona but here got the attention of the authorities of barcelona so it may be that barcelona will come to the risk of madrid most possible the, and if all is going well, we are going to start uh, in October with three schools in Barcelona too. So uh, this is Spain, and then who knows? Now and be ready, but you have to study Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> That could be uh, interesting to have a super classical for uh, nano satellite projects. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, the people, the students also were very active in in, in bringing all this uh, new generation of explorers to outside. I, they, they were given the conference, the students of Spain in Peru for little children. And uh, this connection between the, the young generation from Spain and other countries, of course, that they speak Spanish, uh, is very important. And they were also uh, pres represented at uh, the recently Madrid Feria of Technology. And uh, well, I, in fact, there is something that may, I can tell you. Uh, to work with in a program like this, using a virtual means is is not so easy. You you meet your students by Zoom, and in fact, you, you don't have con personal contact. Eh? You don't have, and what what the only thing you see is their eyes because of corona restrictions. So it is not only virtual, it's only it's also that you only see the eyes of the students. And what a teaching a, a teacher needs is to to discover what each one of their students what is what is what he is, what he likes, what is what and what he is the best. What is his potential? But when you see only the eyes of the student, it's not so easy. So believe me, uh, I am doing something very, very uh, difficult, but uh, I think that the results are excellent. Uh, I have 30 students, uh, wonderful, beautiful students. And the first time we met was ex tremendous excited. Uh, everybody was crying. Of course, I am the first one to cry. And, and I didn't meet it many times by person, but uh, yes, every time we met, it's, it's very exciting, very, very different. Wow, amazing. Well, it seems like you have endless energy. <laughs> and I know uh, people will be amazed to know that you have grand grandchildren, but will you ever retire? I can't. I cannot. <laughs> but you know what? When I retire, I will intend to do a long cruise around the galaxy. And my around the galaxy? My ship is not ready. I cannot retire now. Impossible. <laughs> I am preparing the engineers that are going to build my ship. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I like this approach. <laughs> so uh, last question from, from me, uh, and then uh, we'll give the, the audience um, the floor. Uh, it's the same identical question, and it's regarding the Israeli space industry. So, Ani, based on all of your dreams and aspiration, where do you see the Israeli space industry in 2050? Really, really, I think that we are going to continue to be small players. This surprise you? 
No. Okay. This is what I think. We are going to continue to be a small player in this uh, um, global market, but um, yes, there are something that we are going to to be very important. And this is in many, we are going to participate in many, many uh, international programs, international projects together. And, and we are going to do, to contribute in a lot of research. research. But in the, 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 in your specific, your question, I, that is in the industry, I think we can we cannot pretend what we are not. We are small players, yeah? And we are good in researching and education. We are the best, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but, but I think that even so, that we are going to be very, uh, continue to be small, the, the benefits, the profit of the very small little part of the global market is fantastic for Israel. I think it's, people talk about to reach the one percent of the benefit. Is it right? And to reach one percent of this whole global market is is, is perfect for Israel. Uh, this is what I think made up. Do, do you, uh, since uh... One way of predicting the future is making it. And since uh, you are educating the future leaders, uh, do you uh, already have some uh, students in mind that uh, sure. you know for sure that in 2050 will be completely. leaders of the industry? Completely, completely. You know, when I, when I have my group of students, I know who is going to be the leader is incredible. I know, but I can't tell you the numbers. <laughs> okay. I can't tell you the numbers, I can't tell you the names. It's, this is a secret. But uh, yes, right, I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that's it for me. And Kiara, if you'll be so kind to uh, uh, read Annie some questions from the audience, that will be lovely. Yes, of course. So we have a question here from Aiden, and he asks, what is the worst roadblock you encountered during your career, and how did you overcome this roadblock or challenge? What was was the by was by what? Roadblock, uh, a challenge. Challenge. Well, this is a challenge. This is a challenge to do the impossible. This is what's the best thing, because when you take a challenge, you take a challenge that you think that you can do it, yes? I, for example, I can't say I'm going to travel to the, in the galaxy because it's impossible. But uh, I think that this is the, the use, use pay, this is, it was my, my big challenge. The, this is the important thing, this is the biggest contribution that I do in my life. No question about it. I don't see it my big papers about the evolution of the galaxies uh, are very, are much important compared to the new space, not at all. Perfect, thank you very much for that. Um, let's take another question. Uh, we have another question here from Chris, uh, which is about solving the three Gs gap in space, generation, gender, and geography. Based on your experience, how can the European and Israel Middle East region do a better job of including Latin American and Africa in space development? Do you think Indo-Pacific and Asia is doing a good job for that as well? Well, I, if you have what I had, I, the idea of two species for all the young people, but it, you have to pay attention to a little thing that maybe I was not very clear. I am not talking about children. I am talking about young people, yes? When I'm talking about young people, I'm talking about age between 15 to 16, 17, no younger than this, okay? This is the, this is the critical age where people 
start to understand about reality, the environment where they live and do the, the big decisions. I don't think this is, there is any difference between in geography, but of course I have talked only about the uh, democracies, open societies, I don't know uh, about other countries. But uh, when, when you have an uh, open-minded society and parents that uh, support, support their children, uh, I, I think there's not at all any difference in the geography. And I think that uh, we that started programs, in, we in Israel that started programs like this, and we know the results because the results in, in Israel were excellent. So I think we have the obligation to bring this to the world. This is, uh, is, is uh, and not, not only to South America because of my language. Uh, we have to do it in Africa. I try to do it in Africa. I try to do it also in Philippines, Montenegro. I can tell you a lot of, uh, but uh, of course I can't do it alone. So if there are there anybody hearing, I, please, please help. Um, we can do it together. Right. Like that? Yeah, maybe I will. It's uh... going to be always for me, isn't it? <laughs> but be because I, after all, I am not a system engineer. I always will need you. <laughs> So that was a, a call for anyone out there that uh, wishes to promote STEM education in space. Uh, contact uh, Annie, she will be very helpful by sharing her um, experience and uh, some tips and guidelines uh, uh, of uh, how to overcome uh, obstacles and bureaucracy and anything uh, like that. And uh, as we say, the sky is the lower limit. It's just the beginning. Exactly. Maybe another question, Kiara? Yes, of course. We have two more questions left. Great. Um, so we have a question, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, from Yitzhak Felcher. And they ask, microsatellites are relatively cheap. Is there also potential for deep space exploration microprobes? <laughs> Oh, micro micro satellites are not so small. Maybe you want to explain it like that, or I will explain it. You can explain uh, yeah. it if you want. No problem <laughs> with me. Just because there is a difference. Completely okay. different. I, I can do it. You can do it. Whatever you want. Uh, well, you're the guest. <laughs> okay. So when, when we talk about small satellites, you talk about Phantom, Picos, Nano satellites. And that satellites are less than 100 grams are fento, less than one kilo and picos, and for between one kilo and 10 kilos are nanos. And this is all of them, we call them nano satellites, okay? And then you have micro satellites, much larger. So we are talking already satellites but hundreds of kilos and then larger satellites, tons of kilos. And there is a difference, yes, what each one can do, because size gives us uh, a lot of limitation of what the instrument we can put inside, yes? But when we think about nanosatellites, that we are now putting one here, one there, we are not thinking in one, we are thinking in the future, we are going to put many, many uh, together. And while I, for in my case, I imagine uh, many na nanosatellites together building a big, big telescope in the sky. This is me. And something else is going to do something else. Yeah. But when you use this, this, uh, this little satellites, and they, you can launch them separated, but you can also in the future maybe do a complete each other, 
in space. So the possibilities are, we have no limits in, in this possibility. It's like a Lego, you build and build and build. At the end, the large satellites that are today the standards, they are going to disappear because their cost is too much higher. We can't allow to, to take this uh, possibility. It's a failure. It's a lot of money that is wasted. So yes, the little one, that little one that everybody thought that was were toys. This is this uh, the best. This is uh, this this little one are our future. Yeah, and, and you know this. Today is uh, working. People are working with them with communication already, but the possibilities are unlimited. Another question? Yes, we have one final question. Uh, uh, wait, is... wait, wait. Maybe, 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 maybe that you want to add something. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Then, final question is from Yarden Carmel. And they ask, what do you think is similar or different to starting a student satellite project in Spain in comparison to your experience in Israel? Not at all. No difference. No difference. The same person, same people, same complications, same society. No different at all. But if you give me the choice, I would like to be all the time in space. The book is the better. The pulpitos and the food and the languages, my first home, of course. But no, the people is not uh, any different at all. Same society, completely, same society, same potential. Maybe the Israeli is more explosive, yes, more explosive, more indisciplined. <laughs> but uh, it's right, I am right. Indisciplined, it's a. It's, uh... A very nice way to say it. Yeah. Creative, we, we, creative. Okay. But, but the end, uh, uh, inside is, is the same, the same values of society, the same, uh, the same values of how um, to the behavior in society is the same, completely the same. And I, I enjoy very much to work in Spain. And uh, same is in Argentina, of course. And uh, I, I have to tell you that in Israel, is at the beginning, it was difficult for me. Yes, it was difficult for me to. The, the food was different. The language, it was completely crazy. And <laughs> you have to read in another direction. No, it's crazy. But and, and also. You have to put some points in the words. Uh, it was very difficult, but uh, society is, is the same. We are one. We are one. We are deterrents. We are one in our planet. So we go together, yes, to our future. Great. Amazing. So I think we are uh, about to wrap up. Um, Annie, thank you very much for the time and uh, the patience. Uh, it's always a pleasure to hear you talk about your passion. And uh, if you go to the cruise ship, to the galaxies, <laughs> please uh, keep uh, the seat next to you available because I'm most definitely going to join you. Okay, I will buy four tickets. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And just before I'm heading it back to Kiara, I would like to tell you that the next Space Cafe Israel will be on September 28th with the founder and CEO of Space Pharma, Mr. Yossi Amin. And it will be entitled Space Commerce Revolution in Leo from miniaturized lab to production units. Back to you, Kia. Thank you so much, Meida. Thank you, Anna. It was really, truly a pleasure to listen to you speak. It's been a lot of fun. Um, now, before we leave you for today, I would like to briefly uh, give a rundown of our upcoming Space Cafe events. 
So on the 30th of August, we will have our next Space Cafe, 33 Minutes with Davida Petrillo, uh, answering the question, is there enough room for the youth in the European space sector? And how does the Space Generation Advisory Council see this situation? Then on the 2nd of September, we'll have our next event from the Space Arbitration Association with Laura Silinski. And her and her panel will be trying to answer the question, can space arbitration protect space investments? And on the 9th of September, we'll have our next Space Cafe Canada by the wonderful Dr. Jessica West. We'll be talking with Professor Ram Jaffu and David Kuan Wei Chen on the newly published McGill Manual of International Law. So as always, all our events are going to be online on Eventbrite. And our team will be on the road in the next couple of months. So if you want to say hi or meet us, you can meet us at the Spacecom Expo, the IBC, the World Space Business Week, the Space Generation Congress, or the IAC in Paris. Just let us know, we would love to see you. And as always, we love to hear your feedback as well. So please check in with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Don't forget to sign up for our daily and our biweekly newsletters. And if you want to treat yourselves to something special, become a Space Watcher today or help us out in the Supporter Program. Again, a huge thank you to Maydad and Anna for this really inspiring and insightful talk and for being our guests. And thanks to the entire team behind the scenes for doing this great job week in and week out. I hope that you all stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for asking all your questions and so being so active in the chat. I hope to see you in the next weeks. And in the meantime, visit our website, follow us on social media, and don't forget, become a space watcher. Thank you so much.